being born here and suddenly being expelled. No, it was very dramatic. Oh, oh, oh. It was a very traumatic experience. I think what what his government did not do, was not able to do, was to expel them. As a patriot, it was a good change. It was a very good change. But the way it was done. I think what was behind his mind, he wanted some sense of security. So he could do what he wants to do to his fellow Africans. And he did it, unfortunately, killed a quarter of a million people after we left. It seems Idi Amin realized that the communities were segregated. The communities, Asians and Africans. And somehow he felt that, that by expelling an entire community, he could solve the problem overnight. It's estimated that about 50,000 held uh, British passports. And then the Bote government tried to get these people to migrate to UK. The British government was not willing to take in a huge amount of people. So they had established a quota that every year we can only allow so many. The, the British government lacked the courage to say, please, out. In August 72, where on the 4th of August, I think, Amin announced the expulsion of all British passport holders, gave them 90 days to leave the country. Half of the people who were expelled were Ugandan citizens, you know. I was born in Kampala, 1946, in a hospital at that time, which was known as Asiatic Hospital, in, on Nakasero Hill. My family is from Osaka. My entire family, including my father, were all born in Uganda. I grew up in Masaka for my primary school, my junior secondary school, then I came to Kampala for my O-levels, and I then moved to England for my university, and that was where I was in 72, when the mass expulsion of Asians occurred. Amin went to, uh, to Moroto and said that when he was in Moroto, he had a dream. And the dream was telling him, you expel those Indians in 90 days because they were milking the economy of the country and they were not feeding the cow that they were milking. The Asians were brought here by the colonialists to build railway. The railway is now finished. Let the British have the Asians and the main soldiers have their dukas. I had a shop on the Kampala Road. I had a boutique, the shoe shop, and the dress shop. I was running that shop, and all of a sudden, the president declared that he had a dream, and the, all the Ugandan Asian, all people should live in three months, 90 days. Then people, you know, started asking questions that, what about the nations of this country? And then in that confusion, first they said the British should go. Then they said all the Asians should go. So, you know, even those who were nationals of this country had the nationality and the passport of Uganda, they didn't know what to do really. First of all, we couldn't understand. We were thinking it's a joke, you know, because how do you come to terms with it? You don't know. You think first that it's just a joke. It's not meant to, you know, it can't happen. People thought the man was joking. Said that, that I think the man is joking. Now, the Minister of Information started issuing a statement every day, Radio Ghana and UTV. You are remaining with Nefro 20 days. You are remaining with 19 days. You are <laughs> with 18 days. Ah, until the point that the thing was real. My brother was here till the last minute, my brother-in-law, and helped some Asians to get out because they didn't have any money for the tickets. 
So they were arranging for the money and they let them get out as to go by air or by train or what. What could you take with you? All you could take was whatever clothes you could get into a suitcase. And they were going through everything that you had. So everything of value was taken from us. So we all we were left was with our clothes and things like that. Uh, so it was, a, it was a very traumatic experience. Our black Ugandans knew very well that we were going to take, which they did. On taking the shops, people used to simply come and line up and uh, somebody responsible, because most of those people were giving shops were from the army, or from the army. They were being assisted by the police or other security, and then they would simply say, okay, the shop is yours. Man claps his son, sign the pool, give him the key, open the shop with everything there. Some other people phone money, phone money, phone money. Well, actually, the majority of the properties were returned and they were sold in the open market. There are Asians who came back, they returned, then they decided to sell. Uh, they've entered into joint ventures, they've rehabilitated some of the farms. The one who repossessed the farm, he said, okay, it's your farm, I'll give back to you. But he didn't give, give us any trouble, but he said, you give me some time, which I can wind it up. So we gave him the time, and he was gentleman. We gave him some money, we gave him some money. But uh, he was a gentleman, he didn't make any fuss to give, and he gave us the farm back. Uh, Uganda used to grow a lot of cotton here. We used to export about half a million bales of cotton from here to UK. So Uganda has a very bright future. Our land that is good for cultivation is over 80%, yet we are only utilizing under 30% of the land in the agriculture sector. So let's all work together. Our com company has so far invested more than 40 million US dollars. And likewise, there are more than 100 such business houses from the Indian origin or Indian community. And every business is flourishing and they are growing leaps and bounds. Apart from that, we are getting new investors also. Let those industries start exporting from Uganda, which is possible. Uganda will earn foreign exchange or will save on foreign exchange. Let Uganda not be a trading partner, let Uganda be a manufacturing hub for the East Africa. And it is only possible by attracting foreign inv investors. Download the app on App Store or Google Play Store now. Vision Digital Experience, the future of media.